Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to parse XML data and even convert it into JSON data using the Go programming languages. So if you've been keeping up with some of my other tutorials, you know I did something similar with Java and Node.js, even PHP, all of which weren't the, the easiest when it came to parsing XML. And XML, in my opinion, is, is a beast to work with. But luckily for us, Go makes it very easy. Um, so in this video, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project and we're going to parse some XML data. Um, so you'll notice that I am using Goland, uh, which is an IDE from JetBrains, and we're going to be using that for this particular tutorial. So go ahead and create a new project. If you're using um, Goland like I am, just follow along. Otherwise, uh, use whatever makes sense for your editor. Go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to call this one uh, XML project. And we're going to say create. Now, now that my IDE is open, uh, let's go ahead and create our project file. So we're going to go to XML project and I'm going to say new, go file, and I'm going to create a new simple application and I'm going to call this one uh, main.go. Doesn't, doesn't really matter too much on what you call it. So with the project created, uh, we can start coding. This uh, Goland by JetBrains will actually fill in the blanks when it comes to adding my dependencies. If your editor doesn't do that for you, go ahead and make sure that you add the proper imports for each of the libraries that you wish to use. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and create our structs. Or actually, for a better case, let's go ahead and create the raw XML data that we're going to be working with. So it's going to be a string, um, but we're going to parse it um, and manipulate it as we go. So we're going to say raw XML data equals, and I'm going to use backtick so that way we can do multi-line strings. And we're going to do something like data um, make sure we close it so we don't forget. Uh, each data is gonna it's gonna have a person, and that person will have let's say a first name. Let's go ahead and say Nick. It's gonna have a last name. Let's call it Raboy, and let's go ahead and say that it has an address. And inside of that address, we, we probably expect it to have a city and a state. Let's go ahead and say the city for this one is going to be Tracy, where I live. And the state is going to be in California. Now we're going to go ahead and copy that for the next person, so that way it will save us some typing. And we're going to scrap the address this time around. We're going to remove it. And we're going to change the person to Maria. So this is the data that we're going to be working with this for this particular example. We're going to see how to convert it to JSON and then back into XML as well, depending on what data format you really want to use. All right. So now that we know the, the actual data, we can create our data structures around it. So let's go ahead and say type data, hence the, the top level node. And that's going to be a struct. And we're going to say that it's a uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Then we're going to work with the inner nodes. So it might make sense to say address first. So for address, uh, we, we're going to have a city. And that's going to be of type string. And we're going to define some annotations here. So for the annotations, we're going to define both XML and JSON annotations. So we're going to say XML. And we're going to define what this represents in the XML tag. So we're going to say it represents city because that's what we have inside the tag itself. We're also going to define JSON. And for JSON, we're actually going to call it city as well, but we're going to omit it if it's empty. Let's go ahead and, and add the next line. Let's go ahead and say state, and that's going to be a string. Again, it's going to be XML, and it's going to be state. JSON is going to be, of course, similar. And we're going to omit it if empty. Perfect. Now that we have the address in place, and I noticed that I have a typo here, struct, uh, let's go ahead and create a person. So let's say uh, type equals person. That's going to be a struct. And for this person, we're going to have a first name. It's going to be a string. We're going to say XML. We're going to say um, first name. For the JSON, it's going to be first name. We won't omit, omit it this time. We'll require it. Last name is string, XML, last name. And JSON is going to be uh, last name as well. 
And then finally, we need to be able to link the address and the person together. So we're gonna say address, and this is gonna be a pointer of address. And for XML, we're gonna say address, because that's what the uh, node is, uh, address right there. Um, so address, and JSON is going to be, of course, we're gonna keep it consistent, say address as well, and we're gonna omit it if it's empty. So we're gonna allow the address and the address uh, properties to be uh, empty, um, and in those cases, they just won't show up in the JSON. So now that we have the person and address, let's go ahead and finish this, uh, this data node. Uh, so we're gonna say person list, and we can say that that's gonna be a slice of person, and that's gonna be XML person, and JSON is going to be people, so plural, uh, because that makes sense for JSON because it's gonna be a JSON array. Now, the thing about this is, well, we don't technically know too much about the, the parent node. We, it's lowercase, I mean, technically it would work. We'd have a uppercase data, but we wanna be able to define what the XML node name is itself. So let's go ahead and give it a name. So let's go ahead and say XML name. And that's gonna be XML.name. Uh, the XML um, value is gonna be data. And the JSON in this case, uh, we're not gonna include it at all. Oops. So we're gonna use a hyphen. Now, we don't have to add the XML name for each of the other two structs um, because those are already defined by the XML in the actual data structure attribute within the parent node. So for this case, address, we don't need to have it because person contains address, XML node address. Uh, we don't need to define person uh, because that exists in the person uh, for the data structure. So, so on and so forth. You can define it if you want, um, but we're gonna go ahead and roll with the default here, what we have uh, for each of the parents. So let's go ahead and save it so far. And now we can actually start towards adding some code. So back in our main function, what we can do is we can say var data, and that's gonna be of our data structure. And we're gonna say xml.unmarshal. And if you're familiar with the JSON commands, it's, it's pretty much the similar thing. We're gonna say this is gonna be a, a slice of byte, raw XML uh, data is what we called it. And we're gonna say, um, load that into data. Um, so all, all we're doing is unmarshaling that string into this data structure. And because we have the annotations in place, each of the properties are gonna go into the correct um, data structure property. So now that we have that, we can say JSON data. Uh, let's ignore the error. And we're gonna say json.marshal. And we're gonna say data. And what we're doing here is we're actually saying, you know what, take this string, uh, marshal it into this, um, unmarshal it into this data object, and then we're gonna turn it into JSON. So we're marshaling it back in, but this time we're gonna display it as JSON. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna say fmt.print line, we're gonna say string, and we're gonna say JSON data, and we're gonna save it. So now that we have that, we could probably run it and see where we end up, and then uh, work towards adding, making a JSON string back into XML. So let's go ahead and run. Uh, we're gonna to need to define, uh, let's go ahead and build it raw XML data, so do I have a typo here? Raw XML data, yeah, so I forgot the colon here. So it caught it, so I'll save it, I'll run it again. This time around, it printed out uh, that JSON string. So it, it is now in JSON format. So we easily took that XML data, which in my opinion is very nasty to work with, and we turned it into JSON, which would be more pleasant to work with when it comes to, say, an API. Now. Let's go in the opposite direction, even though that we don't absolutely have to. Let's, let's go in the opposite direction anyways. We're gonna say raw JSON data, and we're gonna say uh, use the back tick, so that way we can use a, a multi-line string here. Um, but we're gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and, and create this object. We're gonna say people, and this is going to be an array. And inside of people, we have objects. So we have, for example, and I'll, I know I'll forget to add my brackets if I don't do it ahead of time. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say first name, this one's gonna be Nick. We're gonna say last name, this one's gonna be Raboy. So basically the same steps, but we're just converting it back. Uh, for the address, 
this is going to be an object. And then we're just going to copy and paste after this. But we're going to say city. This is going to be Tracy. State is going to be California. Let's go ahead and copy uh, this, this person object. And we're going to remove the address again. No, we can actually, let's remove it from me this time because the previous entry for XML didn't have it on uh, Maria, who lives with me. So let's go ahead and say Maria. Uh, we're going to save it. Uh, raw JSON data is probably saying it, it hasn't been used, which is fine. Uh, but we're going to go to the next line. We've already declared data. So what we're going to do is we're going to say data equals uh, data. So we're going to empty it out. And we're going to say json.unmarshal. Remember, we did XML unmarshal previously. We're going to say byte. We're going to say raw JSON data. And we're going to say ampersand data. Then we're going to say XML data. We're going to ignore the error. We're going to say XML dot marshal. We're going to say data. And then finally, we're going to say FMT dot print line. We're going to say string because we, we have a, a byte slice here. Uh, we're going to say XML data and we're going to save it and we're going to run it. So this time around, we have our JSON data, which is from the first step, and then it converted it back into XML data. And if you see, I'll go ahead and remove this line up top uh, on line 10. We'll, we're, we'll remove this attribute name. I'll save it and I'll run it. Um, so it still worked, but this time uh, data is actually capitalized. So it's all up to you um, what you want to do. I like to leave it in um, so that way I have full control over each of the XML nodes and then how it appears in JSON and so on and so forth. Um, so just to summarize here, um, we created a data structure for each possible node of our XML data and we added XML annotations as well as JSON annotations so that way when we marshal and unmarshal this data, uh, we can print it out and, and uh, Go will take care of all of the heavy lifting for us.